Boom! Yo, what up everyone? Mike here, hanging out on the mushroom farm. Great video for you guys tonight. So we're gonna do a deep dive on herisium cultivation, okay? I have spent years cultivating herisium mushrooms. I've actually grown thousands of pounds of lion's mane mushroom, coral tooth mushroom, and bear's head mushroom. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit tonight, all right? And I wanna say, I've done videos on all of these mushrooms before, kinda of like in depth on each one, and I will link those in the description box below in case you guys wanna check out each one of those individually, because I've got like different shots of different grows and different grow rooms over the years. I've actually built four different mushroom farms. So be sure to check out my Instagram, that's down in the description box below if you wanna see some old pictures of some of my previous farms. But anyway, I've cultivated all three of these together. And also, if you have not already clicked that subscribe button, make sure you click that subscribe button so you see more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. And if you want any liquid cultures, just head over to my website. That's in the description box below. So we're gonna break this video down by species, okay? And I just wanna say first, all of these mushrooms grow great together in the grow room. So you can grow all three of these heristians together in the same grow room, no problem. There is some nuance between each one, and I'm gonna discuss that in this video. And I'm gonna tell you guys which ones are kind of the easiest, which ones are the hardest, what you can get away with, what's gonna give you a little more trouble. We're gonna talk about the flavors. We're gonna talk about the medicinal aspects of these mushrooms as well. Now anyway, let's get into the first one. Number one, the lion's mane mushroom. So this one, out of the bunch, is probably the most well-known. It gets the most media attention. It's the most popular. And it's also probably the easiest to cultivate. Now I will say, as far as its appearance, those are some lion's mane up on the shelf there, on that top shelf and on that little shelf right there. I'm gonna roll a couple clips right here of the lion's mane mushroom just so you can see it a little more up close. But this is a beautiful mushroom. It's got this spherical tooth-like structure. It's kind of a cascading white icicle-like fungus. Absolutely gorgeous mushroom. Now first, I wanna talk about the growing parameters. Like I said, all three of these heristiums grow wonderful together. Now, we need to keep the humidity in between about 85 and 90% for the optimal results in the grow room. I like to keep my temperature range in between about 60 and 75 degrees to hit that Goldilocks zone for all three of these heristiums. We need to keep our airflow adequate as well. I like to keep the CO2 below 1,000 parts per million, as well as have adequate air circulation throughout the room. I will say, the tricky part of the Herisium coralloides and the Americanum is the fact that they have more of a coral-like structure, okay? The lion's mane mushroom, being kind of a, more of a spherical, dense ball, it's a little more forgiving in the grow room when you have variances between just airflow or humidity throughout the room those Herisium coralloides or the Herisium americanum, you might notice is some coloration variances or just variances as far as the dryness of the mushroom or moisture levels of the mushroom due to different spots in your grow room. If you have different areas in your grow room that are more moist than others, or maybe have a little more airflow than others. So keep that in mind. That is probably the one thing that separates the coralloides and the americanum from the lion's mane. Now, those are the growing parameters. Now let's talk about the flavor differences in these mushrooms. So they all have this wonderful seafood-like flavor. The lion's mane kind of has like the strongest, boldest flavor out of the three. And I'll just say the Americanum and the Coralloides are just both very similar. You're gonna have to just decide for yourself what's your favorite one out of the Americanum and the Coralloides. Now, the lion's mane, like I said, being a little bit bolder in flavor, it gets these bold flavors the more mature the lion's mane does get. If you pick it at a little earlier stage, it will never display that kind of like bolder flavor. And I will just say the Herisium americanum, the bear's head mushroom, or the Herisium coralloides, the coral tooth mushroom, kind of always maintain these like sweet, subtle notes, kind of like a crab meat-like flavor all throughout the growth process. So you could harvest them at this tiny, small, like micro mushroom size, or this giant blasted out size of Herisium coralloides, and they will keep the same flavor throughout. It'll be this nice, sweet, subtle crab meat flavor. I'll just say, don't let your lion's mane get too mature where it starts getting like brown or like dark yellow or like super off white. That's where you're gonna get more of those bitter notes to your lion's mane. Now, as far as the Herisium coralloides, the coral tooth mushroom, and the Herisium americanum, we need to make sure we're picking these at the right time too. You don't wanna let them get over mature or overripe. If you let them get too overripe, it will definitely dramatically decrease the shelf life. For instance, the coralloides, I recommend picking the Herisium coralloides where it is pure white and just looks snow white in color. It'll have the longest shelf life and can last up to two weeks under refrigeration. 
the Harissium Americanum, I recommend the same. Try to pick it when it's kind of a whitish color to off-white color. The more yellow it displays, it's really gonna cut down on the shelf life, but this mushroom can last up to two weeks under refrigeration as well. Now let's talk about some of the different health benefits these mushrooms have. The lion's mane mushroom has been known for its brain health, okay? Now the coral tooth, it's not as well known, but it actually has neurogenerative compounds as well. So lion's mane got so popular because it has neurogenerative compounds that help us with a process known as neurogenesis, which is basically the formation of new brain cells or nerve cells. And that can help alleviate symptoms of things like Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's disease. It might help with mood, um, depression, things like that. So the lion's mane is very good for our brain health but the coral tooth actually has compounds in it as well. Those compounds are actually called carousin in the coral tooth. Pretty cool. Now I will say, I have not personally seen any information on Hericium americanum, but it would not surprise me if the Hericium americanum had some type of neuroregenerative compound in it as well, just due to the fact that we know for certain that the lion's mane does have compounds in it and the coral tooth has compounds in it. So if anybody has information on Hericium americanum neurogenerative properties, feel free to email me or just put a link down in the description box below and I would love to check out those studies. But I personally definitely think that there may be something neurogenerative in that Hericium americanum and we just haven't discovered it yet. That's kind of the gist of it for these hericiums that I want to talk about in this video. I want to say if you're a cultivator and you want to try growing some of these hericiums, head over to my website and you can pick up that three species hericium master pack. If you guys have any questions for me, make sure you drop it down below in that comment section. I will address all your questions, but hopefully y'all found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but that's all I got for you on this one. And I will catch you guys on the next one.